All right, everybody, welcome back. We continue our adventure here with What Remains of Edith Finch. So far, we have been going through this house, sort of seeing how every single family member has passed, and every single one of them has been very unfortunate. And it seems like Edith here, the character that, at least I think, is telling the story, but most likely the kid that she had is reading the story because she wrote everything down. I know that's her for sure, the one that we're moving around and exploring the house, right? Because she she has explained that she came back, but almost have a feeling that the one that we saw at the very very beginning with a broken arm is not either anyway she's she's seen and going through the stories of what happened to her family and everybody in that family tree all of it has been very unfortunate and it's just gonna continue to be so i feel like the stories got they started a little bit like weird maybe not so weird but maybe odd and strange and now they're starting to make a little bit more sense right kind of like what happened in the very last previous family member the way that he ended up dying which was our mother's father which was our grandpa. And it seems like this room here is the one that our mother shared with Gregory and Gus. So let's find out about them. We still have this beautiful view here. And it is nighttime and it, it, it's gotten dark here for me too. So I remember Gus was only two years old if y'all remember. What happened to this baby? Hold on, it says, um, oh, they- Girl. Girl, let me read this. <laughs> so Kay didn't die, they just got divorced. Okay, fine, I guess I don't Dear have Kay, to read this. Do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like, something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Is that why they got separated because of the baby? I think he saw things the rest of us don't. What am I doing here? Oh. Tell me the baby drowned. I'm the frog, by the way. I turned over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. A child's imagination. <laughs> Again. What his world is like. We're duckies! Our mother's figuring some stuff out, alright? You reminded me so much of oh. <gasps> More time! Lost in his imagination. Wait, I want the whale. Saw. Come on, everybody, help me out. Let's get a whale friend. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Woo! Okay, no, 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 that was bad, that was bad. Okay, but, okay, teamwork. Come on, get the whale. It sure made him happy. Okay, I won't get a copyright for this music, right? What does that say? Oh, flip me over. Okay. Woo! Come on, whale. I know how silly it sounds. We're bubbles! Right? But I'm worried about a baby being too happy. Bubbles, bubbles. Bubbles, bubbles. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Okay, the baby didn't drown. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Damn it. Again? Girl, get the baby. Leave the phone alone. 
Oh, I'm still the frog. Woohoo! Oh no. No, 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 no. Wait, it shouldn't fill up though. I wish you could have told us. Why is it filling up? About the world we saw. She, she unplugged the thing. There's so much I don't understand. About Gregory. About everything. Baby drowned. <laughs> one second, y'all. I don't know why that one got to me. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't even her fault. I don't know how the hell that happened. Maybe she didn't really unplug it. Also, I kind of want to finish this game today, so I've been playing it all day. That's just been a lot of deaths, like, very sad, unfortunate deaths. <sighs> okay, I mean, everybody's dead. It's kind of like when you watch the Game of Thrones, you know, everybody's gonna die, but it still gets to you. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Okay. Anything in here I can grab? No. Gregory? And then Dawn. We don't even have the bed matches no more. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... How did Gus die? Hold on. Did he get sick or something? House rules. Let's look at the house rules. Uh, no playing outside without permission. No answering door for strangers. No messes after dark. All chores before dark. Respect others. Yeah. Guess we can't really turn on the lights, can we? <laughs> There's a routine, duties, what time to wake up, and all that. Huh. I wonder if this is how I exit. Because, you know, the door is sealed, of course. Alright, let's figure out what happened to Gus. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard. Before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Oh look, they're getting married. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <gasps> the dad remarried. 2K! The wind Who was the original mom? The panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent.
tell me this thing's gonna get caught and that's why like it falls on us. Wow, I'm picking up a lot of junk. Rain Sorry came down guys. Buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. I'm just trying to pick up all the trash, you know, not littering and all. I need the words too. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, Make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Hmm. What ended up happening to him? I don't think I understood. Did he get flown away by the... By the storm? Huh. Okay. Those two were very short, so we're gonna keep on going. We're gonna have to climb this, right? Yeah. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Oh, she moved up here. <laughs> Did her mom travel, I wonder? She spent Ooh. a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad. Sanjay. Sanjay. We're helping hands create safe places. That was cool of your mom. She helped people. Oh. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. My mom right, moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Wow. Wow, we're on top of the house, y'all. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, Things were good, almost normal, but it didn't last. The curse. So did our mom continue teaching English? Just here, I guess. How did your dad die? We haven't really gone into that, huh? The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Hold on, what's up here? Oh, I don't know if I can go in there. I'm gonna take a peek nonetheless. 
I think eventually this is how I continue. I don't know, the game's telling me to go that way, so I'm gonna go that way. This is Milton's room. Man, look at this view. Just curious if there's anything in here. I need to look at this too. Just a little bit jelly. I don't know. Would I want a family curse? Probably not. I'm still convinced it's the house. Or their belief of the of a curse. I don't think I'm gonna be going in there, y'all. Do I go in through a window? After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. How do I go in? Oh, here we go. I think was Eden was happy to finally one. have another painter in the family. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> How cool! I would have loved this. You got natural light coming in when you're painting and stuff. That's what I always want. <laughs> well, let's find out what happened to you, my boy. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Lost, right? We don't really know. I was four when Milton disappeared. I still kind of want to know what happened, though. How did he disappear? Just disappeared? Huh. I guess that was it. How do I exit this? Oh, back down Mom I go. Mom spent searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Him going through this door and like never coming back and disappearing. Oh, that's one way to put it, I guess. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Hmm. We're gonna keep going, y'all. These lost family members are they're going kind of fast. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. <laughs> Wait, how am I getting up there? Hold on, when there's a will, there's a way. Here we go. We're gonna find out what happened to our brother, Lewis. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on.
I think we all know what she's talking about. The marijuana. <laughs> oh, this is such a cool view too though. I'm so jealous of this house, y'all. It's just a pretty view, the location. <sighs> Got cool little figurines and whatnot. All right, what's going on here? What happened? Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. All right, he got a job, right? He kept working at the Kenway. But he withdrew part of himself. As you do. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... ...wander. Oh my god. Oh my god! How am I supposed to do this? I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. Guys, I do this at work too. <laughs> you kind of disconnect a little bit, right? Because he kind of his to. way about. Then something moved. Bats and toads. Things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Because he's daydreaming. Like a whole new Lewis. It's like a way to escape, you know? So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. A little doggy. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. songs for them to play. We talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's not get too distracted. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won.
They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Oh, we're selling! He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewis here. Oh. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. He forgot to go home. Even as okay. his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Alright, you know what? Escaping from work while you're doing work, I get that, but this turned out pretty bad. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Handsome queen. Uh -huh, then what? The queen was on her own quest for... Sinister serpents. Sinister serpents. Followed the sound of her. Silver Harp. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. I can't even see anymore. He knew the world was all in his imagination. My queen! Sorry, all my camera died for a second there. No! But he was Am so proud welcomed? of having created it. In his own eyes, He'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Hello. Huh. Alright, this looks like reality here. Wow, so my dude was probably what, going through depression or something? Going through something began to forget the world we know. This looks like mine. What happened? Oh, wow. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. I can only imagine the smell, y'all. Also, why are the fishes being dropped into the water? Am I, am I missing something? He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Hey, Lewis? My dude? There's no fish there. Hey, wakey, wakey. Am 
What am I supposed to do here? Slap him! He'll snap out of it. Who the heck am I, though? Oh. I gotta go up here. Lucas! I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. My people! <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want to live in this world, right? Including the wise Calico, who'd insisted on advising him. The cat Molly. His queen waited, holding his crown. There's only one thing left to do. you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. That sucks, man. I don't know, he lived so much in that fantasy that it was better than the real world and just took Lewis himself and out. Louis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Oh, I could exit through this. Oh, the door was not locked. Wow. I thought it was going to be an accident or something at work, not, not that. On the from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. Whose room was this? Mine? My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Oh, was this... Oh, this was our mom's room. <gasps> she published books, y'all. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now was to tell you about that last night. All right, y'all. 
Let's look at the tree real quick. The only person that we really have left is Dawn. I don't think we found out how our father died, Sanjay. Well, we might. And then we have Edith. I think we're really close to the end now, so we're gonna end it here and find out how the story ends. All of that has been very tragic. I'd be very heartbroken to find out that Edith is actually dead. And I wonder if we're on our way as like, the kid that Edith ended up happening, she's the one going back to the house to check all of that out because eventually the house ended up being for Edith, right? And that was passed down to her kids. Also, I just completely forgot about Edith number one. We haven't found out how she passed away. And I think we're gonna find out right now because the mother didn't tell her until that very day and they just left like that, like nothing. Let's see what happens. I'll catch you in the next one.